From the Kennedy Space Center in the United States on April 11, 1970, a rocket was sent on the Apollo 13 mission. It had three people going to the moon on it. It was interesting that this was already the third NASA trip, even though it had only been a year since Neil Armstrong's first steps on the moon. Because the last two trips to the moon went well, the astronauts in this rocket were sure they could complete their mission and reach their goal. They wanted to walk on the moon. That was their dream, but they didn't know it would never come true. In April 1970, when their spaceship was about 330,000 kilometers from Earth, all of a sudden, they heard a loud bang, a big bang that shakes the whole sky. The alarms and danger lights start going off in a few seconds. It was loud because one of the air tanks had broken. Okay, Houston, we have a problem here, he said, as the other oxygen tank started to leak quickly. You need to say, Houston, we had a problem again. The people in charge on the ground couldn't believe it. Astronauts in the spacecraft could see through the window that air was leaking, but they thought the instruments were broken. On the other hand, they saw that the blast had thrown the spacecraft off course so much that it was now traveling thousands of kilometers away from Earth every second. Men on Apollo 13 were so far away from Earth in just a few hours that it set a new record. To this day, no one has ever been so far away from Earth as these three men did on Apollo 13. Let's not talk about landing on the moon. The question at the time was whether they could make it back to Earth safely. This sad story about Apollo 13 is true. The amount of carbon dioxide in the cell is going up. The crew started to feel bad. It was not good at all. It was a real problem. In 1961, American President John F. Kennedy told the world that people would be living on the moon by the end of the decade. They were able to reach their goal of landing a man on the moon and safely returning him to Earth. This promise makes sense when you think about the Cold War. The United States and the Soviet Union were in a race at that time, a race to see who can be the best at technology. In 1969, missions 11 and 12 of Apollo both went well. They didn't walk on the moon, but they did get back to Earth safely. The promise Kennedy made came true. Some people in the government lost a lot of interest in spending money on space right after. The first man walked on the moon. It's clear that people were excited to see this happen. But people can't be that excited the second, third, or fourth time. Moons are becoming less and less interesting. The American government cut NASA's budget because people thought that Apollo 13 would be just another normal trip. A lot of planned flights for the next few years were called off, including Apollo 20. Now you understand why the Apollo 13 mission was so important in the history of spaceflight. Space was still important enough for the U.S. government to pay for, so NASA had to show them. Because of this, Apollo 13's main goal wasn't just to look at and map the moon's surface, it was also to teach people how to work in lunar conditions. A big part of Apollo 13's mission was to study the moon scientifically. We want to learn a lot about how the moon came to be and how our planet came to be from there. Apollo 13's spaceship was built in a way that was similar to the last mission. It had four main parts, the command module, the service module, the lunar module, and the launch escape system. It was sent into space on a Saturn V rocket. The command module, which was the main part of the spacecraft, was where all three scientists were sitting. It was only a small part, though. The command module is shaped like a cone and is only 11 feet long and 13 feet wide. All of the control panels. It had small motors, navigation gear, and a life support system for a radius. It had more engines and fuel cells to make power. The service module was the second most important part. It held most of the oxygen for the astronauts. The command and service module, or CSM for short, is often referred to as a whole. They were linked throughout the mission and will remain so until the pilots return to Earth. They don't split from each other until they come back to Earth. Moon module was the third part, and its job was to land on the moon. It was meant to be attached to the CSM module again after the work on the moon was done. There wasn't a lot of use for the fourth part, the launch escape system. Its only job was to keep the crew safe in case something went wrong during the launch. In the event of an accident during the launch, the rocket ejects the passengers safely and takes them away from the accident. If the launch goes well, however, the LS is thrown away because it is no longer needed. There was no need for the LS on April 11, 1970, because Apollo 13 had already launched safely and efficiently. There were three men on board, Captain Jim Lovell, Fred Hayes, who flew the lunar module, and Jack Swigert, who flew the command module. By chance, none of these were picked for this task according to the original plan. The first three astronauts picked for this trip were all different. 
but each of them had their own issues that kept them from being able to join the quest. This is why these three astronauts leave Earth with their group. About 200,000 people were on the ground to watch this rocket launch. The Apollo 11 life of the previous year was a lot bigger than this number. Seven million people watched the rocket start. NASA once again saw how quickly people lost interest in space exploration. But back to the mission, this ship headed straight for its goal. They were told it would take three days to get to the Fra Mauro crater on the moon. That's a crater, which is a big hole on the moon's surface. Scientists think it holds a lot of information about both the moon and Earth. What went wrong the most in the first two days of the flight was astronaut Jack Swigert, realizing he forgot to file his tax return. On Earth, he asked Mission Control if he could get more time. Have you all paid your taxes yet? Down there, things happened really quickly, and I need more time. I forgot to file mine. I mean it. He got a friendly answer telling him that he could get an extra 60 days. This exchange shows that everything was fine. Nothing went wrong with the plan for the first two days. When the mission was 46 hours and 43 minutes old, the person in charge of the ship said that the spacecraft was in good shape and that they were getting bored sitting there. People were getting bored because things were going so well. Also, this may sound strange to hear, but I think it's a good habit to give yourself time to be bored on purpose. I think that if you want to be as productive and creative as possible, after that, you need to give yourself some time during the day, a period of time during which you do nothing, getting bored. This is a great way to calm down, especially in this busy world. Someone starts looking through their phone as soon as they feel bored. Let's get back to the subject at hand. On April 13th, the third day of the journey, the crew is told that they need to test the lunar module. The other thing is that they have to do a TV show. The cams will be used to show the world what's inside the command module and the service module. So, few people were interested in this that it wasn't shown on any TV networks at the time. To watch this program, Commander Lovell's wife went to the VIP area of mission control. Flight controllers on the ground asked astronaut Swigert to check the oxygen level about six and a half minutes after the TV show ended. That wasn't strange about this. Of course, the air tanks in the service module were being checked. As I said at the beginning of the movie, many warning lights and alarms went off. And while this check was being done, there was a huge explosion. The astronauts in the spacecraft were mostly in shock. At Mission Control, Commander Lovell told them, Houston, we've had a problem. It turned out that one oxygen tank was almost empty, and the other one was quickly running out of air. The people in charge on Earth at first thought that the tools were giving them false information, but it turned out to be correct. If people really wanted to save these pilots' lives, they had to act right away. TV stations that had said this mission was dull and weren't showing it on the news suddenly made it the main story. This morning, Apollo 13's trip to the moon is in real danger. It's not going to land on the moon. The air tanks in the spaceship were shaped like spheres. In these, liquid oxygen was kept. In the middle, there was a heater that turned the liquid oxygen into gas. In the services module of Apollo 13, there were two of these tanks. Tank number two was originally placed in Apollo 10, but was taken out to be changed and it led to a small accident. It got broken when it fell over while being fixed. The tube inside was broken, but no one noticed when it was being checked. People who were trying it noticed that the tank wouldn't be empty all the way. The heater was used to boil it all the way through to get rid of any air that was still there. The thermometer inside could show a temperature of up to 30 degrees it was found later. The heater would get as hot as 538 degrees when it was used to heat the air in the tank. The temperature didn't show that it was very hot, so no one noticed. The heaters were so hot that they damaged the insulation on the electrical lines inside the tank. When NASA managers and engineers approved the tank before the journey, they did a full investigation and couldn't see any damage inside. Because of this, there was a spark and the tank exploded on the third day of the Apollo 13 mission when the tank was being checked as part of a normal procedure. Putting the tank on the outside of the spaceship was just a lucky accident. All of the astronauts would have died right away if it had been connected inside the spacecraft and gone off there. But since it was outside, the blast happened outside. Only a 13-foot screen in the service module was broken. What else in the spaceship was broken? There was some doubt among the pilots. Now, everyone had to make a big choice. How could they get back to Earth? Moving the spaceship around was the fastest way to get back to Earth. The main engine of the services module had to be started first, though. It was in the CSM module, close to the blast. It wasn't clear if the engine was broken or not. 
Going toward the moon and going around it was the second way to get back to Earth. There would be no need for the engine of the service module for this, but there was a chance that it would take four or five days to get back to Earth. Did they still have enough water and oxygen? That's what NASA's flight director picked. To go back the long way, the astronauts were told right away to turn off the CSM section. They were told to use the moon module as a lifeboat on the way back. I chose this choice because it was safe, but it had some issues. Because of how it was made, the lunar module could only hold two people for about 20 hours. As I said, its original goal was to land on the moon and reconnect with the CMS module. Now, though, these three people were going to stay in the lunar module for four to five days. The moon module's engines were not made so that they could be used over and over again. There was a lot of danger in this move as well. To save energy and supplies, the astronauts were told to turn off all of the spacecraft's non-essential equipment, including the heaters that were already there. It was very important to use less power. As planned, the men sat down in the lunar module and the engines were turned on for the first time. It's called a burn when the engine is turned on. To get on the new road, they do the first burn. They got to the other side of the moon with the help of this burn. The moon's far side. They're the first people in history to go very far away from Earth. And it's still the best record ever. They were 400,000 kilometers from Earth at their farthest point. They could get to Earth about 153 hours after launch if they kept going this way. The time difference was very risky, though. If they got to Earth after that long of a journey, there would only be one hour of extra oxygen, food, and drink for them. A NASA team on Earth thought this difference was very small. That's why the astronauts were told to turn the engine of the lunar module a second time. They did a lot of math and mission control to figure out if the engine in the lunar module could handle the second burn or not. The second burn showed that these numbers were right. The flight time went from 153 hours to 135 hours, 11 hours of extra time to live. Another problem came up before the crew could calm down. A lot of carbon dioxide in the air. Along with oxygen tanks, spaceships have lithium hydroxide containers that get rid of carbon dioxide. Astronauts breathe out carbon dioxide when they take in air. A lot of carbon dioxide will be released if that carbon dioxide isn't taken away. This can be a problem. Lithium hydroxide is stored in canisters so that carbon dioxide can mix with it and turn it into lithium chloride. It was a problem, though, that the lunar capsule only had enough lithium hydroxide for two people to last two days. Three people wanted to stay alive for four days, though. It was good that there were also some containers in the command function. They did have square filters, though, while the ones in the lunar module were round. There were 24 hours for the experts on the ground to figure this out. From the spaceship, astronauts talked to them and told them about everything going on around them. They wanted to make something that could solve the problem out of plastic bags, cardboard, suit hoses, and duct tape. A few hours of trying later, they made a device that made this work. After being shown how to do it step by step, a new device was made with the things that were there, and the carbon dioxide level went down again. In his book Lost Moon, Commander Lovell says that the Machini wasn't very attractive. But it worked, and every little thing was taken care of during this rescue mission. After being told not to drink more than 200 milli of water a day, pilots never did. Because they'll have to go to the bathroom more often if they drink more water. That's why they had to drink less water to stay alive. The amount of pee they made could change the direction of a spaceship. Altogether, these three men lost 14 kilograms. Heise, an astronaut, got an infection in his UTI. When Apollo 13's spacecraft gets back to Earth after four days, the astronauts understand they need to burn again. It turns out that the people who did the math didn't account for the cooling vapor inside the spaceship, which makes it go off course. The spaceship got back on track after Commander Lovell burned the lunar module a second time. Luckily, the spaceship could also handle the third burn. Despite the fact that this moon module was only meant to handle one burn, everyone in the world held their breath and watched the news, and were waiting for the scientists to come back to Earth by walking. The astronauts' family members watched this play on TV together. There was one big question left. Will this broken spaceship be able to handle the heat when it hits the Earth's atmosphere? The pilots might not make it. They had to go back to the command module for this part because that was the only part that was designed to land on Earth again. It was impossible to talk to anyone once the order entered the Earth's atmosphere. 
it was normal for this to happen because ionization of the air block's radio waves, making it impossible for NASA workers on the ground to talk to pilots in space. This communication block normally lasts for two to three minutes. Communication was supposed to be cut off here for no more than three minutes at most. It had been three minutes, but no one on the other end had answered. The spaceship didn't talk for 10 seconds, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, or even four minutes. It took four minutes and 28 seconds. But finally, someone from the other side could talk. People who were watching it on TV could finally take a deep breath. They were all able to stay alive. The command module made the parachute, and it fell slowly into the Pacific Ocean. The three men make it safely back home. Still, the Apollo 13 mission left its mark on history, even though it failed and none of the three men set foot on the moon, showing the history, Apollo 13 rescue mission and how brave the astronauts were. A lot of books and movies have been made about it. After this accident was looked into, NASA put in place a lot of safety steps to make sure that similar things don't happen on future missions. After Apollo 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17, all of these flights were successful. Apollo 17 was the last mission that NASA sent out as part of the Apollo program. It happened on December 7, 1972. The astronaut on this trip stayed on the moon's surface for three days. And that was the last time people went to the moon until now.